That's a good net. And a good lift. Set of 10, 12. She took that at about shoulder height, didn't she? Yeah, she was really under pressure. It was a, a wrong choice of shot, that's for sure. I'm sure Yip, she's very happy with the fact that uh, Song is taking chances and, and playing what she's doing, and uh, obviously making mistakes as well. Sitting at the right side of the body Third as well, hour. on the forehand side. 13, 11. Opening yeah. up there, look at that. It's really well placed. First attacking shot had been down Yip Pui Yin's forehand side, then as you just pointed out, down the backhand, and then the body blow. Mm. Been all over the court. I think Sung is, is really controlling her, her baseline shots pretty well. Oh, that's clever. Fourteen, eleven. by a whisker. Yeah, it's not a lot, but 15, I think it's out as well. Yeah. We're sitting here right on the line. Yep, that was wide. Good call, line judge. I think I've only seen one bad call in all the matches that we've watched so far. It's been really good. Yeah. This this tournament. But the good thing as well is that we are having these international line judges coming in as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a super net shot. First over. Twelve, fifteen. Yep, very tight. That's what she's got to do. Look at that. That's coming here. That's neat. Very nice. She's going for the push. 13, 15. Really going for the shots. See, that's what she wants. That's what she achieves by serving the low serve. She's getting these lifts. She's she likes to attack, and then that's obviously in her game. That's what she wants. Giving the initiative away from the beginning is not to her liking. Six mm. over. 16, 13. Well, I know she missed the net shot, made the error, but I had uh, a little gasp, I have to say, that uh, when she hit that low serve, I was very surprised that didn't get called as well. Yeah. I agree with you. Borderline. Yeah, it looked very high. Yes. 
Thirteen. You know, it's almost the opposite of with Sunji Hyun, isn't it? She's very content to give the initiative away. It's almost as if Yip Bu Yin has got too much time to think. She doesn't know which of her shots to try. And then she's making the error. A long time to think about it. I, I think from the very word go, I 19, think Sung 13. should be quite content and happy with her defense playing against Yip and... Uh, and, you know, I think uh, on, on occasion she has actually put herself too much under, under pressure by attacking. I think she's just played it very simple, keep it going, and uh, she would have had all the mistakes from, the, from Yip. Yeah, well, Yip Boy Yin's made four straight errors, hasn't she? Don't you love that net shot? Another one. Yeah, and up come match points. 20, match point, 13. And so, points for the overall tie. That's how I, I think she sh should have played the whole match. That's mm. what we see now. <laughs> Set over, 14, 20. Time, second time of asking, and Sung Ji Hyung of Korea secures the third vital point for her team in this overall tie against Hong Kong. 21 17, 21 14, the scoreline. And as we witnessed yesterday, Ip Pui Yin come the latter stages of a game. I don't know whether it's that she gets too tight, but sadly for her, just too many errors. 47 minutes in duration, and the victory to Sun Ji Hyung. 21-17, 21-14, and of course Korea lead 3-1.
So Korea with an unassailable lead now. 3-1 in the best of five matches tie against Hong Kong. Of course, this Group 1B encounter. And it means that uh, tomorrow's match of uh, Korea against Thailand will decide who tops the group. But we have one more match to come because, of course, at the group stage, we play all five matches. The last match, of course, in this tie is women's doubles. And the Korean pair lead the players onto courts. Jung Kyung Ung and Kim Ha Na returning to court after her mixed doubles. First match on, she played, of course, with Go Sung Hyung. There she is, busy lady. We are up against the Hong Kong pair, the left and right hander, Poon Lok Yan and Te In Su. Yeah, Korean's looking. Okay, that's first. Very uh, relaxed as well they might. Because yeah, they wouldn't be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it all looked a little bit shaky at the start, didn't it? I mean, it did. I it did. certainly uh, thought that. Kim Hana playing with Go Sung Jung were the favourites for that mixed doubles, but how impressive was that youngster? Very from well Hong played, Kong. very yeah. well played by Lee. Yeah. Was. And I, I still think that the men's singles was uh, probably the decider. I thought that uh, Hong Kong had a good chance of winning that men's so singles. So did I. Well, so to this women's doubles, and I'm quite certain I think that the Koreans will want to get a win under their belts to build on the confidence and you can see they've had a pretty good start to this year two titles already in that 17 and 4 win loss record for 2013 they won the german grand prix and then the swiss grand prix so two weeks apart sandwiched in between those two tournaments of course was the all england where they were quarter finalists but a current world ranking of 11 have been as high as six. And one of the reasons, of course, that their ranking has dropped was their enforced absence from the World Tour, the suspension imposed by their own National Olympic Committee after the events of London 2012. So to the left and right hander, and Poon Lokyan, the 21-year-old, she's the right hander. Her partner, also 21 years of age, Se Ying Su. And their career win loss record, as you can see, in the negative, but they are a young pair. And as far as this year is concerned, they reached the final of the Vietnam International. And of course, last match on last night against Thailand. It wasn't last match on, and mixed doubles. What am I talking about, Morton? <laughs> Keep me right on these things, will you? You just babble on. <laughs> 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 of course, their women's doubles uh, yesterday, which was the fourth match on. They beat uh, Duang Anong Arunkison and Kunchela Vorovici Chaiku in the three games. Well, there's a very yeah. disappointed, disappointed. Uh, looking Yipuyin. Yeah. Yeah, she's very upset indeed. Well, you can't blame yourself in a team competition. Every single player has their part to play. Yeah, he really does live and breathe for badminton, so doesn't she? Hit for she you, does, you yes, have to feel for impressive. her. Yeah, it's very yeah. impressive. So, uh, of course, this is the second time these two pairs met each other. The first time was in those All England Championships earlier this year. Two straight games it was to the Koreans, 22-20, 21-19. So we can expect a hard battle here. And of course, the Hong Kong pair like their opponents, have won one Super Series title. And as we look at our umpire and service judge for this encounter, of course, the Hong Kong pair, their Super Series title was won at the Japan Open last year. For the Koreans, it was the India Super Series event of 2012, and it was that win in Delhi that secured their place in the Olympic Games. It was their Where's ranking the of winning the that tournament. Ladies they had to win gentlemen. it to get there. Yep. On my right, Korea. That's pretty good. Yeah. Good time.
Tim Hana. On my left, Hong Kong, China. Represented by Che In Sik, Ko Lok Yan. Korea to serve. Kim To Sun. Love all. Play. So, Jung Kyung Ung. And Kim Hana, nearest to us for Korea. One love. Morton, this Hong Kong pair actually played together as juniors. They were bronze medalists at the World Junior Championships of 2009, which were staged here in Malaysia. And we've been talking earlier on this evening about the Koreans and how they mix their partnerships up, both, you know, uh, women's doubles, men's doubles, mm -hmm. mixed true. doubles, switching them around. It's a total contrast with the Hong Kong pair. Two youngsters started out together as juniors and they've stayed together they stayed together yes but but as, uh, as you said before they also play singles and uh, you know keep themselves really fit by playing singles and so so they've just chosen another route so to speak i think the the hong kong pair plays really well when c the the, the left hander is, is is fired up and really playing well she she can really set it up but is also by far the most temperamental of the two. Lucky, lucky shot. Five, three. Just clipped the tape. It's coming here. And stopped the flight of the shuttle. Yeah. And this one was on the tape as well. Six, Just not three. coming over. interesting to see some of the guts from the, the Hong Kong pair because uh, you know knowing the whole situation for the team is that Hong Kong is out whatever happens now and this is the last match they're, they're going to play but obviously they have to show that they can win and they have to uh, you know keep working at their game Yeah, I think that's a very important point, isn't it? Because, I mean, of course, badminton is an individual sport, and even in team competitions, you compete as an individual, mm. you know? And the psychology of what's happened, what's gone future. before, yeah. and, and what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. I mean, here we have the number 11 and 12 ranked pairs in the world. Eight you know, they four. should be very, very close in standard according to their ranking, according to their results, they look very, very cl close. And come future events, you know, the psychology of uh, of this match may affect what happens in, in the future. Exactly. Yeah. So it is important. And players have got a need. They need to understand that. Already 
on to I out-rally after that mistake. You could just see the temperament you were mm. talking about. Start again. Pressure from Kim Harnar. Five point advantage at the mid game interval. And of course, their first tournament this year. The Koreans playing in their home events, the Korean Super Series, had to enter as independent players because they were still serving their suspension. Did it go on for six months? Or it was reduced to six months, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because in the beginning seconds. it was a lot longer, wasn't Court it? One, I, I think originally there was talk of two years. Yeah, two it, years it was yeah. certainly then yeah. reduced if it wasn't already one year, and then it got reduced to Eleven, six, six months. Play. And I stress that was imposed by their own National Olympic Committee. BWF took their action, decisive action, at the time. In case people were wondering why on earth the same situation didn't happen to all four pairs concerned, that's an excellent rally. Well yep. finished off yes. from Jung. Mm, needs to change her racket, does Kim. Is the uh, string broken or? Yeah. So in suit. It's a good attack. Oh, good well defense. Saved, yeah, well saved. That's nice. Thirteen, six. A lot of talk in recent years, Morton, about the dominance by one particular nation, China, in this particular discipline, yes. the women's doubles. Looking at this young Korean pair, both players 23 years of age, both very good natural athletes, mm. Do you see as their development progresses that they could be a real threat to the top Chinese pair or pairs? I think I think they can, definitely. The, the, the only thing is that will their defense be strong enough because there's no doubt that the Chinese pairs are stronger in the sense that they, they have more power and that means that they will hit harder. So they have to have a very strong defense to, to keep them on court for as long as possible. But if they can do that, then I, I can't see that uh, they should not be able to win. Oh, that's absolutely fascinating because to me, one of the uh, things that I'd like to see this Korean pair improve upon is really trying to hunt the shuttle more at the front of the court. Mm. Uh, you know, if I think about Wang Xiao Li and Yu Yang, and if you were with us on day one yesterday, of course, when China were playing against Seven, India, I mean, they were very impressive. I mean, I think that top Chinese women's doubles pair, the way they actually They work harder. Yeah. yeah. And that, that at the moment, to me, doesn't seem to be the same sort of urgency in the style of play within the rally from this Korean pair. But they have, they definitely have the potential. Yeah. They, they can move, they can do it. Yeah, I agree. They just have to push themselves harder. I think it's a little bit disappointing that the Hong Kong pair is has 10 points down. Um, as you say, they're 12 and 11 on the ranking. Uh, it should be a lot, lot closer. Yep. So no, it doesn't matter whether they, they win or lose in terms of the, the team match, but still as their own personal pride. Let 
There's the frustration again from the left hand. That's a good shot. Oh yeah, that's yeah. clever too. Yeah, two good shots. Time is over. Nine, nine, ten. This fault called. Not is pointing over. in a downward direction. Oh, that was my goodness. Flow red. Yeah. All she had to do was get that over and in, <laughs> yeah. and game number one was finished. Yes. She read it really well. Ah! Second time of asking, Pope. 21-10. That's confirmed by the umpire. Loud and clear. Just 11 minutes, Morton. Yes. Expected <laughs> it longer than that. Well, I'm with you. It, especially in the ladies doubles. Yeah. Still game number one. All credit to the Koreans. 21-10. Which is looking very animated. And I suppose one of their biggest problems, I mean, you're so experienced as a coach, you know, when you're in this situation, your players have already lost the overall tie. You know, it was going to be a, a tough match for the Hong Kong pair to win anyway. How do you how do you motivate them? Of course, you and I understand the importance of this and we can uh, sit in the the cold light of day and and give all logical reasons but out there what do you cold say to the players seconds. to motivate cold them to get themselves seconds. going and fight for this but i i think it, it has to come down to personal pride In, you know every time you go on court whatever you do you have to be the best you can be at any given time and even though the tie is against them and they're never going to win it like uh, like a team they have to work as hard as they can i hate when they say oh it doesn't matter we've lost anyway yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. One love. I hated to lose. <laughs> Me too, no matter what. Yeah.
actually been thinking about what she what? said to me before about the Korean pair. You asked me, you know, have they got the ability to get up there and really threaten the, chi uh, the yeah. Chinese pairs? And um, it made me think. And um, I think they are, in, in many ways, two lookalikes. They play exactly the same style, both of them. And if they're going to win against the Chinese, I think they have to develop some edge somewhere, some differences between them. Okay, so looking at the best pair in the world at the moment, the number one ranked pair in the world, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. Mm. You've got Yu Yang coming forward to the net. She's always hunting the front of the yeah. court. And Wang Xiaoli, to me, is probably one of the most creative players there is in mm. the women's game. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. They've got different styles. They have different things to offer exactly. in the pair. Yeah. And this Korean pair... They're, they're so similar. Great observation. No, that one's gone long. At least I think I'm getting what I want from the Hong Kong pair now. I think you know they're they are, they're working harder. They they want to to win the rallies and they uh, they really put their foot down now. So it's it's nice to see three four. Mm, that was nice. Yeah. Good angle. Yeah, that's well Five, placed. Six. Very well placed. In towards the right shoulder. Good surprise. Very good surprise. That's nice. That was a good play, yeah. Hey. Oh, oh, well played. Yeah. Go red. Often for the forehand defense on that one. Look at that. She's standing forehand. Yeah. Good peripheral vision by the Greens to spot that.
Eight, five. Yeah, we're seeing some much longer, much hard fought rallies now in this second game. And that's what we were after. Again, that time she was waiting, committed to backhand, backhand defence. <laughs> That's a good serve. Okay. That's well played. That's good to see. That's well played by the Koreans. They really pushed up there. Yeah. run of five straight points to go to the mid-game interval with a six-point advantage. And I do think that uh, the last few points, the Koreans have been very specific with the placement of their attacking play. And that, I think, is something that women's doubles players have to think a lot more about. You can't. The defensive play is too good in general to think that you can just hit through your opponent with power. Men's doubles players can do that because but even then, they can't do anything. No, no, no. You have to go for placement. That's uh, that's uh, one, object number one. Yep. one oh, a tall Chinese Hong Kong China coach there. He used to be a Chinese player, didn't he? Do you remember him as a men's doubles player? Yes. Remember the name. I was going to say the name escapes me, dear me. Yeah. Oh, that's nice oh, good, angle. good angle, yeah. That's the kind of surprise shots I, I like to see from the Korean side if they're going to make an impact all the way up yes. on the ranking. Time is over. Six. Eleven. Oh, she's disappointed in that, but I have to be honest. It was a good defensive shot. Yeah. few occasions we've Twelve. seen the, the Hong Kong pair lifting to the backhand side of the Koreans and the attack is coming down the line then the cross-court lift is coming which is good the attack is good, uh, then coming uh, down the line I would love to see a cross once again on that defense that would be really brilliant if the situation comes to them. It's been there a few times already. Let's go. 
so often used in doubles the hitting in between your two opponents down the center of the court narrowing the angle of reply Good ready oh, oh she's missed it sure. that's a good follow in well played all the way until the last shot <laughs> I understand the frustration there. Ah. Mm. Cross court clear to the left hander. Not convinced by that. Oh, but it wasn't long enough, high enough. No. In every aspect, it was not a good shot. So, Poon and C is working their way back in. 12 14. Let's see if we're going to have a third set here. Hmm, just seems a little more urgency in that rally by the Koreans. So just sensing the danger. Mm. Yeah, it's all been a much Time better cover. second game, hasn't it, than the first. 15. Required by the Koreans. Secure this women's doubles. Point by the Koreans.
point opportunities now for Korea. That's a fantastic way yeah. to finish the match. 21-10, 21 21-15. 21 Jung Kyung Ung and Kim Han up. Yeah, victory. And of course, that victory means Lux, that Korea, Korea beat Hong 10, Kong 4-1 in the overall tie. Just over 30 minutes of play. Like the final shot, will be in trouble. Desperation, defence at times. And yeah, that final one, absolute delight. That's a sharp one. So as they take leave of the court. Teammates and coaches congratulate the winning doubles pair. So, of course, that means that all five matches have been completed, all started this evening in this uh, Group 1B match with the mixed doubles. And a big surprise because the Korean pair, who have played two tournaments so far this year and been in two finals, winning one of them, were beaten. So Hong Kong were one love up in the overall tie. And one win key of Hong Kong, who's considerably higher ranked than his opponent, going down in two straight games. 21 16, 21 15, Lee Dong Kyun, the winner of the men's singles. And then it was the former Asian champions, silver medalists, of course, earlier this year, Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Rang. Men's doubles against the youngsters from Hong Kong, but I have to say, it's the young Hong Kong men's doubles players have been very, very impressive. May have gone down in two straight games, but there's an awful lot of potential. Then it was women's singles, and Sung Ji Hyun, career overcoming Ip Pui Yin. In being faulted on her low serve at least four times, getting a little bit frustrated at times, but two straight games it was to some Jiu And as we've just seen, women's doubles and a second appearance for Kim Harnap, beaten in the mixed doubles, made amends in the women's doubles with her partner Jung Kyung Ung. And all our matches. Two straight games as they won through that women's doubles 21 10 21 15. So there you can see confirmation that Korea have beaten Hong Kong 4 1. And of course, with Hong Kong losing 3 2 to Thailand yesterday, it means Hong Kong are out of this Sudamen Cup campaign. Play two, lost two. It'll be a straight playoff tomorrow between Korea and Thailand as to who tops Group B. Well, we will be back with lots more action tomorrow from all of us here in Kuala Lumpur. Do join us again tomorrow, 12 noon local time. But in the meantime, from Morton Foster, myself, Jill Clark. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>